Hey, Guns and Games here, back with another video. I hope you all are doing well. Today I'm going to be doing a review slash overview of another surplus handgun that has been uh, actually pretty popular lately for like the last year or two. And is actually quite cheap. And you're starting, you if you've been paying attention online to some of the online retailers, you see them everywhere and you've seen them a lot. This, uh, of course, is the Star Model BM, and uh, they've been available from several of the big names like Classic Firearms, uh, J&G Sales, and I think even Ames Surplus has had them at various points, among others. Uh, I bought this particular one from Classic Firearms uh, not too long ago. It's been maybe mid to early 18, so I've had this gun maybe almost a year getting close to it. Uh, I bought this gun from them for $229 plus uh, shipping and uh, transfer fee. Giving you some of the other information about what it came with. So uh, usually you can get them in a, a box of some kind, uh, a kind of green cardboardish material box like this, or they offered them although they're not quite as common. They offered them in kind of a hard case, plastic hard case that would have either been kind of clear or this uh, very dark green color with a, a lid that kind of just pops off. Or you could get them in, just in a, you know, with no box of any kind. I've seen them like that as well. So I ended up getting the green cardboard one. And this is what it came with, what it looks like. Um, there was a giant sticker here when I originally got it, and I uh, removed the said sticker, and uh, you can see it tore a lot of the original paper, or you know, the paper covering off of it. Kind of annoying. I tried to do it as uh, you know as gingerly as I could, and uh, <laughs> it still did quite a number. There's a, as you can see, there's actually writing here, um, and <laughs> you can't read it really at all. It's something like a directory, guard, civil, basically just it's the directory of the something civil police guard. So basically the Spanish police. And there's something else. There's kind of some sort of design under here. And then uh, there's a bunch more writing along here. I don't know what any of that says, but there's a some sort of writing there. And then you got Pistola Star, caliber 9mm. Opening it up, you've got some more writing on the top. Again, all in originally Spanish. This is, of course, a Spanish-made pistol. Again, I don't, I, I'm not, I don't speak Spanish, so I don't really know what it says. But, and then you also uh, would get a instruction manual. Pretty cool. This is a, of course, an original one. Pretty neat. It gives you a, a picture of the factory it was made in. Pretty cool. You know, just some basic instructions. Um, you know, the parts list and guide with all of the parts listed here. You know, tells you kind of how to operate the gun. Uh, tells you how to. Here's here's the disassembly guide with uh, pictures and instructions. Pretty simple. And that's really about it. And then you get to the very back. Um, yeah, I don't really know what this means particularly, but that's uh, pretty short and sweet. That's your uh, instruction manual you would get. And then the gun itself, you get the gun itself uh, and now you get a cleaning rod and uh, I also got an additional magazine usually they will be grouped with a additional magazine uh, I have the uh, you get a little magazine compartment here with enough to put two additional magazines plus one in the gun so three you can hold up to three with the cleaning rod so that's kind of the package the packaging Aside, and then there was also the hard plastic ones, like I mentioned. Now into the gun itself. Uh, the Star Model BM is again a Spanish-made pistol. 
that was made kind of during the Cold War, basically, and is a successor to an early, a couple earlier designs, the Star Model A and the Star Model B. Um, all of these guns are essentially 1911 copies, Colt 1911 copies, uh, at least externally, with a few differences. The, uh, the Star Model A was introduced uh, sometime during the 20s and 30s and was quite literally a 1911 copy. It was a full-size 1911 5-inch barrel. Looks almost identical, really. Um, but it was chambered in the Spanish 9mm Largo cartridge, 9x23, instead. That pistol also lacked uh, the grip safety of the 1911. And it actually had a, a little bit of a different trigger design as well. Um, but other than that, it was basically the same gun. Uh, and then that was later then uh, updated into the Star Model B kind of by the end of the 30s. Um, the only real difference between the Star Model A and the Star Model B is the caliber. The B was in just standard 9mm Parabellum 9x19. That one proved to be pretty popular. The uh, the Nazi Germans, the, the Third Reich, ended up actually adopting the pistol in pretty large numbers. Hundreds of thousands of them, actually, would, would be used. Uh, not by particularly a lot of frontline troops, but like the SS, uh, special units, uh, occupation troops, and whatnot. Police, military police and whatnot would use those. And it was actually pretty popular amongst uh, German forces. Um, that continued, and then there was actually kind of a, another uh, run after the war called the Super B that was made as well. That's particularly the one you see a lot in this country is the Super B. That was the post-war run that was made, and it was a little bit different. The only real difference I can tell is the grip design was changed, basically. Um, and those continued on, I think, into the 70s, actually, when, when this was introduced, the BM, which is kind of just a smaller, more compact version that was made. Uh, production on these began in 1972 and ran until 1992, basically. And it's just, a, again, just a smaller, compact version. Uh, instead of a 5-inch barrel, you're looking at a 4-inch barrel. So essentially a, a commander-sized 1911. So there was also another version later called the BKM that was introduced after this one and was produced basically from 92 to 97. It's the same gun, but instead of being all steel, it has an aluminum alloy frame. And uh, they also made some of them kind of in a polished chrome or nickel finish, some of them, and they also switched back to kind of a wood grip design. The Star Model A and B used wood grips. So, but, uh, and then also interestingly enough, the Super Bs are kind of interesting in this country as well because the Russians ended up actually capturing a large number of Super Bs. And that's how we've actually gotten most of our Super Bs. And, and even uh, regular Model Bs in this country is through the Russians. They captured a lot of them actually. And uh, you tend to get a lot of them that are mismatched because the Russians just kind of took them all apart, threw them all back together, and you get a lot of them that are mismatched uh, serial number-wise. So, And they tend not to be... Uh, you, you can kind of have some reliability problems because of that. So, uh, The Star Model BM, however, was never really used in any conflicts necessarily. It has been used in some, uh, actually two noted conflicts it's been used in. But uh, this gun was used primarily by the Spanish police for uh, throughout the 70s, into the 90s, maybe even into the early aughts to an extent um, by Spanish police. Lesser extent, the Spanish military. Uh, this gun was also adopted by South Africa and was used by the South African military and police as well. Uh, and how, to what extent and in how many numbers, I don't really know. Uh, this gun also found its way into Rhodesia as well because of that. And a lot of the Rhodesian troops during the Rhodesian Bush War uh, used these as well. Huh? On top of that, uh, also Libya 
Libya bought some of these. Mamar went back when, when Gaddafi still ruled. Uh, Gaddafi actually purchased um, these as well. Again, to what extent and how many, I don't know. But these have been used, uh, were, were used during the Libyan Civil War there in 2011. Uh, so those are really the only two conflicts this gun has really seen any action in. And uh, we're only getting these into this country from Spain itself. So these were never used in any conflict at all. So but that's just a little bit of a little bit of history and, and, and some service history. So these things have seen combat to some extent, although not much. Um, again, this is just like its predecessors. It's uh, just like a 1911, but it does not have a grip safety. And the trigger design is a little different. Instead of going straight back like a 1911, it's hinged and goes down, back and kind of downward, as you can see. Unlike a 1911 that just goes straight back. Um, other than that, this gun is pretty much a 1911 in 9mm. It's a commander-sized 1911 in 9mm without a grip safety and a slightly little, you know, slightly different tri trigger design. Um, the third major difference uh, is it has a magazine disconnect safety. So again, if there is no magazine in the gun, the gun cannot fire her. However, I have changed that. The magazine disconnect in this gun is actually really, really easily removable. Oh, and I actually have it in my box here. It's this. This is the disconnect safety. It sits in the frame back behind the magazine. Kind of like, uh, kind of like this, basically, and it's really easy. You just kind of pop it out with like a tool, like get a screwdriver or something, and it pops right out. And then, uh, you know, you can drop the magazine, and voila, gun will fire. So, pretty easy. Uh, took me all of, uh, you know. A minute to do. I just had to take the, the grips off and just pop it out with a screwdriver. Pretty easy. So now that's actually just like a 1911 now and that that difference has been removed. It uh, it disassembles just like a 1911. So if you're familiar with the 1911 platform, it also disassembles just like one. It has the same barrel bushing that you have to take off and everything. You know, pop the slide stop out and everything. Uh, you know, your safety is, is exactly the same. You, know, you just push it up. You know. Trigger is actually really, really nice. Also, like a 1911, it's single action only. Trigger will not, cannot fire if the hammer is not cocked. Um, so it's pretty much just like a 1911 in almost every regard. You know, the magazine release is the same. Sights are uh, almost the same. You know, it's kind of a very simple, you know, pretty simple sight. Sights are actually not bad. These uh, The rear sight's real, real high up. It's really easy to, I found really easy to acquire targets as well. It's 9mm, so the recoil is very minimal. This is an all-steel gun, 4-inch. Uh, recoil is, I wouldn't say it's uh, minimal, but it's not harsh. Very easy to keep on target. Like a 1911, it is eight rounds. All versions of the, the Star were eight rounds. The A and the B were also eight rounds. The BKM is eight rounds as well. Um, eight rounds of nine millimeter, single stack. You know, not gr hugely great or anything, but for the time, I think this was completely adequate. For the time. Um, it's pretty heavy. I mean, it is an all-steel gun, so it is kind of heavy for its size, but not bad. Uh, I don't know if it would make a good concealed carry piece. I mean, it's not big, but it was, it's definitely not small, and it's, and it's heavy. It's really more of a novelty gun nowadays more than anything. And they're, they're dirt cheap. They're $200. So, and they're reliable. I have shot, uh, at this point now, I think... Three or four hundred rounds through it over the year, and I have had zero malfunctions through it. Runs like a dream, shoots well. Really good handgun. I have no complaints with it really at all. Um, there is a one little little issue. The magazine release is pretty stiff. I mean, I really, I mean, I have to really kind of push it in with some force to get the mag to pop out. 
And what's funny is that was not like that. Um, when the magazine disconnect was in the gun, it was not like that. <laughs> uh, it dropped really easily. Now that I've removed it, the mag, you know, the mag release is really kind of stiff now. Oh. Uh, kind of interesting. I don't know why that happened. Um, it's not that big of a deal. You just, you know, get some, you know, get some thumb strength. It's really not that diff It's not that big of a deal. Mag and also then uh, after that as well, putting a magazine in the gun, it, it, as you can see, it kind of locks. It wants to just lock right here. So you got to kind of give it some force. Uh, again, not a real big deal. But again, that was not like that before either. Once I removed the mag release, that happened as well. So, uh, and quickly kind of looking at the condition of the gun. Uh, it's worn. I mean, you've got some... Um, Bluing wear there. There's a lot on this side. Um, this side is a little more rough. And then we look at the top. Not bad. The uh, little bit of wear at the muzzle. The grips are in really good shape. Uh, the internal parts are excellent. The barrel is in really good shape. Um, the two magazines it came with were in, were in great shape as well. Everything works. All the internal parts, again, are, are fine. Just some wear. This is probably just from, you know, holster wear. Um, it was a little dirty when I got it, so I did have to clean it. I, I did, you know, lightly brush it with, like, some wool. There was some crud. There is a little bit of corrosion right here. That's about it. Um, it's all matching. And uh, you can actually determine the date... The gun was made right on the trigger guard, right here. That is a 76. You probably can't see that very well, but that is a 76. That's where you can actually determine the date of your gun. So, not bad. Also, if you're also curious what these big circles are, that is actually where the civil police crests would have been at. Um, but when they get exported, the Spanish authorities mandate that they have to be grinded away because they're not going to be owned by them anymore. So they actually grind the little Spanish government or uh, police insignias off the gun. That, those are what those are. Uh, looks like hell. Does not look good. So that's kind of disappointing. But, yep, I, I've had no complaints. Um, works fine. I wish it would have been maybe in a little bit better shape externally. Um, and the war, the wear, there's a lot of wear right there. I mean, that is kind of bad. And it's not bad, but it's like, eh, it doesn't look, it's not as good. This side looks much, much better, except for that right there. Um, it's just wear and character. Gun works fine. Again, barrel and all the internal parts are great. So, budget 1911, a foreign Spanish budget 1911 for like $200. And magazines are cheap. You get two of them, at least from Classic, you do. Um, I bought, uh, I've got like six or seven magazines for this thing now. I bought uh, three from Classic for $15 each, so I got five. And then one of my local pawn shops had two, and he was selling them for 10 So I bought those off of him as well. I've got like seven or eight magazines for this thing now. So... <laughs> Almost more than any other handgun. I think only my Beretta and uh, you know my Beretta 92 and one of my uh, my CZ 52 I think have about the same. And I've got like a dozen for my uh, my Beretta. And also, also you know I didn't show you the cleaning rod. This is the cleaning rod with uh, some space there for a uh, a rag or a uh, little patch cloth. Basically, your standard metal cleaning rod for a pistol. Nothing special. But it's cool. Um, didn't really show you the markings. So you got the little the little star um, insignia there. Star B Echeveria Ibar Espana SA Cal nine mil millimeter. Pretty cool. There's no markings on the other side. Just serials and then the importer stamps and you know that garbage right there sadly but 
Nice gun, cool gun. Uh, these are everywhere. Like the past two years, these things have been everywhere and they've been dirt cheap. I don't know if Classic's doing it right now, but Classic, uh, last time I checked, they were selling these for $189. $189. They might still be right now. Um, I'm not sure, but uh, I would highly recommend you get one if you're a 1911 fan like I am. Um, you know, I wouldn't say I'm a, a 1911 FUD or anything, but the 1911 is a good gun, historical. And this is a really nice, cheap alternative. They're well made. I mean, the, these things were made with some quality. I mean, these are, this is a quality gun. You can just tell. So, $200. You know, if you want one, I'd recommend you get one. I don't think it'll let you down. Hopefully, you, may, you might get a one that looks maybe a little bit nicer than mine. I did not hand select mine. So, but also just looks really nice. I really like the all black with the, you know, the trigger left in the white. I think that looks really nice. And also kind of on like the back of the hammer, you get some of the weird uh, patina on the, uh, there you go. You get the kind of weird patina on the back of the hammer. They all have that. It's kind of cool. But I uh, highly recommend you get one. Again, uh, 10 out of, not a 10 out of 10, but you know, pretty good score for me. Nice guns. Get them while you can. Get them while they're coming into the country, while these things are $200. Eventually, they're uh, going to stop and they're going to probably double in price. These things will be, you know, $400 in a couple of years. So, uh, they did make about 217,000 of these was the production number total. So, that's going to about do it. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video.